Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to go over properties of exponents with you. So our first one we're going to do here, if I have a base to some power times the same base to another power, so we can think about that's x to the third is three copies of x multiplied together, x to the fourth is four copies multiplied together. So overall total of copies we have multiplying of x is going to be seven copies, so that'll be x to the seven. A similar thing if we have six copies of x and x to the six, and we have two copies in x squared, then if you line all these up next to each other, you have a total of eight copies multiplied together, so that's x to the eight. So our property here is if we have a base to some power times base to some other power, then we can add those exponents as long as it's the same base multiplying. Here I have x to the four and all of that is to the third, so I have a power of something that has a power. So think about if we have x to the fourth cubed, then that's like having three copies of x to the fourth. If we think about each of those being four copies of x inside of each of those, then we have 12 copies total. If you think about x to the fifth and we square that, so that's like having two copies of that thing in parentheses, so that's like having two copies of x to the fifth, each of these having five copies of x in there, we would have a total of 10 copies of x. So our property here, if we have a power of a power of something, an exponent on an exponent, then we will actually multiply those exponents together. Here if I have a single term in parentheses to a power, then that means that I will have that thing that many times. So if I have x, y all cubed, that's like three copies of that multiplied together. So in there I would have three copies of x multiplying and three copies of y multiplying. So we get x cubed and y cubed. Again, that's only on a single term. Similarly, if we had x, y, z and all of that was squared, that would be like having two copies of x, y, z all multiplying. And then if you think about how many copies of each thing you have, you have two copies of x, two copies of y, two copies of z, so we get x squared, y squared, z squared. So our property here is if we have a single term and we have parentheses with a power outside of that single term, then we can apply that power to each one of the objects inside. Let's look at some examples here. We have x cubed times x to the eight. That's our first property here. So since I have the same base and I am multiplying, then I can go ahead and just add the exponents. So that would be x to the three plus eight. In other words, x to the 11th power. For the second one, this is exponent on an exponent. So this is our second property here. I have eight copies of x cubed. So that's going to be like x to the three times eight and that will give us 24 total copies of x, x to the 24 for that one. For the third one here, you notice I have some things multiplying together. So if we look at maybe first the numbers multiply negative five times seven, then that's going to give us negative 35 for that part. And now x to the four times x squared, we're back to our first property here. I have the same base and I'm multiplying these together. So I go ahead and add those powers and we'll get x to the sixth for that one couple more here. So I have negative 3x cubed all squared times 4x to the fourth. So the first thing we want to do is square this first piece here. So if I square each thing in there, that's our bottom property here. I have negative 3 times negative 3, so that's going to give me a 9. And then I have x cubed times x cubed because squared, so that would be x to the six. And then we would multiply that by the four x to the four that we have. So now I'm just simply doing multiplication nine times four. So that will give us 36. And then we have a property of exponents here, x to the six times x to the four, that's our top property. So we'll add those exponents and we'll get x to the 10. For our last one here, x squared to the four times x cubed y squared squared times y cubed cubed. So let's go ahead and apply these exponents on the outsides of all these first. So x squared to the four, that's our second property. We'll multiply those. So our first thing will give us x to the eight. And we have a square outside of an x and a y. So we go ahead and apply that. Now the x cubed squared, we're going to multiply these exponents just like we did in the first one. So that will be x to the six. And now we also have this y squared that the square needs to apply to as well. So we'll go ahead and multiply those exponents as well. 
and we'll get y to the 4. Our last one, this is basically the same thing as the first one. We have y cubed cubed, so 3 times 3, that will give us y to the 9. And now we'll need to multiply. So think about all of the x's together. I have x to the 8 times x to the 6. That will be our first property. We have multiply with same base, so we'll add the exponents. That will give us x to the 14. And then the y to the 4 times the y to the 9, same thing. We will add the exponents there, and we'll get y to the 13. Okay, some other properties here. If we have a fraction to a power, then that's like having that many copies of that fraction. So x over y all to the fourth is like having four copies of that. Think about multiplying straight across on the top. That would give you x to that power. Multiplying across on the bottom would give you y to that power. So we get x to the fourth over y to the fourth. So our property is if we have a fraction to a power, we can apply that power to each piece of the fraction. Obviously we assume that the bottom is not zero in a fraction because we can't have divide by zero in math. Another property here, if I have division of the same base with exponents, so I have x to the fifth over x cubed, that's like having five copies of x on top and three copies on the bottom. If we were to reduce common copies, so I could reduce three copies on the top and the bottom, then that's going to leave me with two copies of x left over on the top, everything else on the bottom reduced to one, so we'll be left with x squared. Here I have x to the six over x squared, so that's six copies of x on top and two copies on the bottom. If I reduce some common copies here, you can see everything on the bottom reduced to one, so we get a one, but we get four copies of x left over on the top, so that would be x to the fourth. So our property here, if you can kind of tell, is that when we have the same base and we're dividing and we have exponents, then we can subtract the exponents, right? I removed three copies of x, so five minus three gave us x squared. Here I removed two copies of x, which was what was on the bottom. So six minus two gave us an exponent of four. And again, we assume when there's division here, we don't have anything that is zero in the denominator. If we look at a similar thing here, what if I had the smaller power on the top and the larger power on the bottom? So now I have three copies on top and five copies on the bottom. If I reduce my three copies in common, now everything on the top has become one, and I have two copies of x left on the bottom. That will be one over x squared. Now if we use our properties that we just said with subtraction of exponents, that would be x to the three minus five, and three minus five gives us negative two, so that would be a negative exponent there when we have more copies on the bottom. x squared over x to the six, we could reduce two copies in common, those become one, so we get one on the top, we have four copies left over on the bottom now, that would be like one over x to the four, but using our subtraction idea, two minus six gives us that that's the same as x to the negative four. So when you have x to a negative power, that's the same as the reciprocal of the positive power, okay? And again, we wanna make sure that x is not zero when we're taking a negative power. So it's important to remember here that negative powers are not negative numbers. Negative powers are reciprocal. So when you see x to a negative power, you want to think reciprocal of x to that power. If we look at some examples here and we want to write all of our answers with positive exponents, simplify as much as we can. So here with our number six, we have two thirds all cubed. That's this property here. So we would go ahead and apply the power to each piece. We have two cubed over three cubed, two cubed on the top is going to be eight, and three cubed on the bottom is going to be 27. If we look at the next one, x over four all squared, well, we just apply the square to the top, so that's x squared. We apply the square to the bottom, that's four squared. Now, we don't wanna leave four squared. x squared, there's nothing we can really do to simplify, so we leave x squared, but four squared, we don't want to leave that for somebody else to figure out. This is our math to do, so we go ahead and say that that's 16. x squared over 16 is our answer. So if I have two to the eight over two cubed, that's going to be two to the eight minus three. Of course, that will be two to the fifth, right? And if we wanted to do, we could go ahead and say that that is 32. For our one down here, we have five to the six and five to the eight on bottom. So that's actually going to be five to the six minus eight and that is going to be five 
to the negative 2. Now, negative exponent means reciprocal, so we read this as reciprocal of 5 squared. So that would be 1 over 5 squared. And we know 5 squared, we should. 5 times 5, that will give us 1 over 25 for that answer. Here we're just combining some rules here. So we have x squared all cubed, and then we have over x to the 11. So first thing, we'll use our power outside of another power rule here toward the top of our list. So this top one here, I multiply these exponents. That will give us x to the 6. And then we'll have divided by x to the 11. Now I have division, and with exponents that becomes subtract. So this becomes x to the 6 minus 11 and that will give us a power of negative 5. Now we said that we want our exponents to be positive, so we go ahead and think about this as reciprocal. This says reciprocal of x to the 5, so this is 1 over x to the 5th power for this one. For the next one, negative 2 to the negative 3. So first let's go ahead and take care of the negative in our exponent. So I go ahead and take negative 2 and I take the reciprocal of that, so this is going to be the same as 1 over negative 2 to the third. And now if I cube negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's going to give me negative 8. So I'll get 1 over negative 8. And probably a nicer, more common way to write this is to just write the negative outside of the fraction and say negative 1 8 for that. Just a couple more here. We have 4 fifths to the negative 2, so we have a fraction to a negative power. So first let's take care of the negative in the power. First let's do the reciprocal, so that will become 5 over 4 to the positive 2 power. And then now we're just squaring each piece, right? So we'll square the 5, we'll get 25. We square the 4, and we'll get 16, so 25 over 16. Or this next one here, 2x over 3 all to the negative third power. So we go ahead and do the negative part of the exponent, that's reciprocal. So I'll think of this as 3 over 2x all cubed to the positive 3. And now we just apply our cube. So 3 cubed, that will give us 27 on the top. And then when we cube 2x, don't forget to cube both of these things, right? So if we cube 2, we're going to get 8. If we cube x, then we'll get x cubed there. So 27 over 8 x cubed. Here we have x to the 6 over x to the negative 9. Well, that's just subtraction when we have division with the same base. So that'll be x to the 6 minus negative 9. Just be careful with your signs there. That's the same as adding 9. So that would be 6 plus 9, which is 15. And that's already a positive exponent, already simplified for us. Here, let's just go one piece at a time. I have my constants, my x's, and my y's. So let's think of this as 4 over 8 times x to the 6 over x cubed times y to the negative 6 over y to the negative 8. So we'll just do each piece. So 4 over 8, let's reduce that. That'll be 1 half times the x part of this, I would subtract the exponents. So that's this property here. So we have x to the 6 minus 3. I'll write that down. We'll simplify that in a second. And then I have y to the negative 6, same property here, subtracting the exponent below, subtract negative 8. So that's going to be like plus 8, right? So for this one, we will have 1 half times x to the 6 minus 3 would be x cubed, and then y to the negative 6 minus negative 8 would be like plus 8, so negative 6 plus 8 is going to be like y squared. So we could either leave it that way, or we could write it as a fraction if we wanted to. We could say x cubed y squared over 2 if we prefer. Some really basic properties of exponents that we've kind of saved for the end to make this easy at the end. If you have something to the power 1, then that's just one copy of that thing. So anything to the power 1 is going to be itself. 
And then we also have a property where we have a zero power. So think about how we would get a zero power. In order to get a zero power with our subtraction property, I would need to have the same exponent. So two to the four over two to the four would be, if I use properties of exponents, two to the four minus four, right? And that would be the same as two to the zero. But we also know that if I have something divided by itself, that's also supposed to equal the number 1, right? As long as we have no weird division by 0 that is undefined. So what this tells us is that something to the 0 is going to be 1, as long as you know we don't have 0 that we're dividing by. So property something to the first power is itself. Something to the 0 power, as long as that thing's not 0, is 1. And that gives us our full list of properties of exponents. We have multiply becoming addition. We have power of a power becoming multiplication. Power of multiple things, applying the power to those things. We have applying the power to each piece of the fraction. We have division with the same base becoming subtraction in the exponent. Remember a negative power just means reciprocal of that same power. Something to the first power means just one copy of that thing, and then something to the zero is going to be one. Okay, everyone, hopefully this helps you with your properties of exponents. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.